Hey, Tommy, I got to tell you, I love this look where you've got the raptor, right, that is clean, and then there's just a little bit of mud splatter on it. It is really the kind of the, the ultimate look because this is something that, like, a company that was doing advertising for the Raptor would charge you $2,000 to achieve this look. And we achieved it just by driving it around normally the way we normally drive trucks. I think Ford should option this as like a paint package. Oh yeah? You know, like paint on mud. I bet the typical Raptor owner would really like that option to be able to make their truck look permanently dirty. Like they really so, use so it So you have like FX4, Tremor, and then what, Dirty Dirty Raptor? Is that the thing? Yeah, it's like the, it's like the mud decal <laughs> package where you can get the, the, the mud on there permanently. It's a dirty, dirty truck. <laughs> Hey guys, this is another fleet update. So in this video, we're going to tell you what we're up to, what our vehicles are up to, and give you kind of a behind the scenes peek into what's happening at TFL. Uh, so as you know, we just bought the Raptor R, um, and we bought it mainly to compare to this, uh, the Hummer EV. Uh, well, we also bought it because we love big old V8s, right Tommy? Yeah, and we haven't compared them yet. Um, because we're a little worried to use the Hummer EV because it is such an expensive truck and we're a little worried to use the Raptor R because it's such an expensive truck. So both of them are just kind of sitting here. Well, that's not true. Uh, <laughs> yesterday we actually drag raced that against a pretty cool old Corvette uh, and that video is coming up pretty soon. But I think we need to do is we need to do a tug of war uh, and then do an off-road comparison and then probably it's time to move this guy to a new owner, new owner at some point. Well, we've been trying to wait till the six month period. Yes, we have to. Because GM actually penalizes the next owner if you, uh, if you purchase a used Hummer within six months, it actually affects the warranty because they're trying to incentivize people not to flip them. But we're almost to the six month period on this first edition. So it's about time to move it to the next owner. One thing I do love though, check out these bronze wheels. We added these on, it's a, it's a GMC accessory and with the 37 inch BFG mud terrain tires, it's just a fantastic look. Yeah, and I'm going to actually be very sad to see this guy go because I really love uh, the Hummer EV, even though it's been a problem child. Uh, like I said before, um, it really has pushed technology to the next level. Uh, and, you know, the biggest issue with it for me was not that it left me stranded, but that uh, it's just so heavy. Uh, but otherwise, I would love this as a daily driver if we were in the you know, business of actually holding on to trucks and not moving on to the next one. The biggest issue I have with it is it left us you stranded. Yes, I know, I know. <laughs> Plus we have, you know, <laughs> it's best, too much, of, be, well, best it's, of both it's worlds. It's too much money in trucks. It is too much money it's in trucks. $230,000 in trucks right yeah, here? Yeah, I know. That's absurd. Yeah, all right, let's keep going. Yep. Uh, this is uh, the Mini GP that we bought during the, I bought during the height of COVID. Uh, you use this as your um, autocross car, right? I did, yes. Um, and I learned two days ago that it was rear-ended in a parking lot in New Mexico because I read the police report. Oh, gee. Yeah. So I just learned that, but that's okay. I'm going to hold on to it and keep autocrossing it. That's, <laughs> that's my current plan with this car. And what the heck did you do to our poor Ram truck, Dan? If you, if you want to see what this is all about, head on over uh, to TFL Truck and you'll get the full... I'm doing air quotes here, scoop on what this is all about. Of course, our Ranger is getting a makeover. We're trying to make it more of a retro Ranger. I think it looks fantastic. I do too. You did a really good job with this color scheme, this kind of retro 70s um, uh, stripe design here. We're gonna put some cool 70s style wheel on it. I think we're gonna do a bed bar like the Back to the Future truck with a few Casey highlights up top. And this thing's gonna be really cool. So I love how this came out. It looks really, really cool. And the next thing we're doing with this guy is our friends over at Ford F-150 LEDs. Uh, sent us some new lights for it uh, to make it actually, you know, much more modern as opposed to, you know, the problem with trucks, of course, is a lot of them, especially this one, have lights that look like they're from the 1890s, not from the 1990s. Was putting a poo on this truck, was that your idea? Uh, just watch the video over at TFL Truck. You'll you, get are it. you aware there's a poo on the side of this there's, truck? There's more than one poo. There's actually one. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's a happy poo on the front bumper. There's also one on the gas cap. <laughs> It's a lot of poo. It's a lot of poo. So let's talk about uh, our bike channel. Oh, we just brought two bikes from California, and unfortunately it's been snowing nonstop here, except for today. So we haven't been able to really do a lot with this, even though uh, Case and Alex have done some videos with the Yamaha and the Kawasaki. Two different approaches to a retro bike in some ways, right? Yeah, and I'm really proud of the work that Case and Alex have been doing because um, the, the channel's really starting to grow. So we have the Yamaha XSR 900 here, which is one scary looking bike i have to say as i someone, love the color combination as someone that doesn't ride bikes that thing looks like it's uh it's got to be an absolute missile and then we've got the kawasaki z900 rs which is this fantastic retro looking bike and it's got um 
tons and tons of power. It's a, it's a really cool looking machine. And then a bike more my speed, under 55 miles an hour. That's the way I like to ride. We got the Yamaha TW200, the venerable bike from the 80s that just keeps on trucking. And this bike, um, we've got some more plans with this uh, spring that Case doesn't even know about. I've, so, been, I've been brewing some ideas up here, Case. So check this out. This has retro gauges. Uh, this has... Uh, Digital cluster. Digital cluster. I kind of like the retro gauges. I know the digital cluster gives you a lot more information, but that is much more ergonomically interesting, I think. Does that make sense? Just look down, you see it. You don't have to, you don't have light that's wiping it out. It's just there all the time. You're not in the wrong screen, right? You're not trying to cycle through different screens to get to the pertinent information. It's not all spread. You've got a tachometer, speedometer, all you need. Okay. That's all you need, dude. That's a, that's a hot take right there, Dad. Yeah, that's my uh, little Roman rant in this fleet update. Look at this, finally good weather, huh? Can you yeah, believe that? Yeah, it's been great. We got a ton of cars we should talk about here. All right, why don't you start with the truck? Yep, so this is a Ram 1500 that the Ram folks have lent us for a couple of weeks, and Andre is planning on doing all of his testing. This is an e-torque Hemi-equipped truck, um, and Andre's got a lot of truck testing he's doing. So we just had an F-150 Heritage Edition. That went away today. Now we have this Ram 1500. We've got a Ram Rebel GT coming here in a couple of weeks. So we got tons and tons of cool truck coverage, which we'll have over at uh, tfltruck.com. So this one has the slightly dirty sticker well what you'll notice is that all of our cars have the slightly dirty sticker because it's so hard now to keep our cars clean because of tumbleweed ranch and they all tend to get just a little bit muddy all the time but let's talk about this car so this is the long-term chevy bolt that we purchased it was a 26 27 dollar car and it has been phenomenal so 259 miles of range for 27 thousand dollars before the applicable tax credit. So if you do apply, this could be, at the end of the day, as little as like $18,000, if of course your taxable uh, um, requirements are, are as such, but really good car, even at 27 or 30 grand. It's got tons of range. It's got really good technology. It's got um, pretty decent at-home charging, and it's just a great little runabout. Yeah, we were just talking about this at breakfast. What do you think? Is it harder to design a uh, four-door, family-friendly Ferrari, or? because they just announced pricing on, I think it's pronounced a Parasangue, right? Their new crossover. It's just under 400000 Or an actually affordable every person electric car. I would bet that that is actually has more technology and more engineering than that uh, big old family friendly Ferrari. Well, what's amazing about it, it doesn't feel like you're driving a penalty box. It actually feels like a pretty premium item. So Chevrolet nailed it out of the park with this new Bolt. We got a lot more video coming with this car over at the TFL EV channel. So a big thank you to those folks who've subscribed. Let's talk about this car for a second too. So this was our old long-term Subaru Crosstrek, the base Crosstrek, we had this for a number of months and then actually sold it on to our videographer, Ian, who in the last year has put like 35,000 miles on it or something. Yeah, he's, he drives dri it. he's driven the wheels off of it. Yeah, he's driven this thing everywhere and it's actually been super reliable. So no issues with it. It's a little slow, um, it's a little boring, but it has been a really good kind of reliable toaster for Ian to get to and from work with all-wheel drive. Dare I say that uh, as an automotive review publication, it's a little uh, confounding that we have to actually buy a Subaru to review it? Well, especially because it's such a good car, right? Yeah, I know. And, and we both admit it's a fantastic car. Now over here, we've got Brendan's uh, Ford Explorer. We have a video coming over at TFL Classics where we went to the parts store and purchased all sorts of automotive accessories that we've wondered about, including this license plate protector, which is supposed to protect your license plate from gentle scuffs into poles and the like, and it did not do that. Wait, wait, that's a license plate condom, Tommy? Is that what that, that is? That is what that is, yes, and Brendan drove it into a pole, and it did not not protect the license plate. In fact, it didn't do much I mean, of anything. I, I would say that license plates are definitely wear items, right? I mean, not, do they really need protecting? I would, I would think that this would serve to protect that <laughs> as opposed to this protecting that, but it's, that's just me. It's supposed to protect the license plate. You want to keep that puppy looking super shiny and super clean, um, but it has not done that. So moving on, uh, I've got some exciting news. So this is my Mini Cooper SC, one of my all time favorite cars, and it is up for auction which is a little confounding, but I'll explain to you why over at tflbids.com. Basically, the point is we've done everything we could possibly do with this electric Mini Cooper SE, and it's just time to move it on to a new home, but it's such a fun car. This is the electric collection Mini, which was pretty unusual, but it gave you stuff like these ghost stripes on the hood. It's got a tricolor roof. Yeah, I think, you know, I think that Mini is the only one that actually has 
a spray booth that can actually do this where it actually sprays three different colors on the roof. So this one goes from like a, almost purple to blue to black. And they're all different. There's, they're not, it's not because they're, you know, kind of combining colors in a very unique way. They're all a little bit different. And it's so cool. I can't tell you how sorry I am to see this guy go. Um, you know, we had a really fun cross-country trip trying to get it from Albuquerque where we bought it. It's been an incredible car. We've had no issues with it. Uh, but like you said, it's time for it to move on. We don't make money by reviewing cars that are now, what, two years old. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's been really, really fantastic. That tricolor roof, by the way, is very expensive for Mini to do. I was just talking to the engineer, and it's crazy expensive, but a really cool option. So next up, let's come on over to this Jeep Wrangler. So this is a, uh, a four-door unlimited Rubicon that we just purchased with all the AEV accessories and goodies. And this Jeep has become our go-to recovery vehicle, not only at the ranch, but off-road and everything in between. And it is uh, getting a ton of use. So it's been driven all over the place. We're really driving the beans so off of it. Let me show you something. It actually has an AEV tag. Look. Oh, I was looking for that, Dad. 2015. It's got like a VIN number uh, uh, and an AEV. It's pretty cool. So AEV stands for American Expedition Vehicles. And they do some of the most, I would say, purposeful off-road upgrades, right? So a lot of uh, Wranglers, when they're upgraded, are kind of done to look cool, right? They've got a crazy offset on the wheel. They've got a lift. They've got big wheels, you know, small tires. This, what I love about this truck, it is a truck basically, body on frame, right? Is that it's built to be purposefully off-roaded. This is one that um, is about as capable uh, as a, of a Wrangler as you're gonna get. So what did, what did AV do to it? Show them the inside roll cage, that's kind of crazy. So um, this is a, a thing you could do and you can still do where you purchase a brand new Jeep and they send it directly to AEV for accessories. So it's got the lift, this one has a roll cage, um, it's got bumpers on it, it's got skid plates underneath, it's got these rocker potential, rock, rock rail, excuse me, it's got an aftermarket rear bumper. And um, I was all bummed out because there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can buy the Jeep and then bring it to your dealer and they put all this stuff on, or you can buy the Jeep, send it to the AEV facility and they do it all themselves in house. But you need to have a couple of things. You need to have the instrument cluster on these Jeeps, which this one does, it's yep. a special AEV instrument cluster. Yeah, sure, go ahead and show it. Which you can't buy. Um, and it needs to have the AEV sticker in the door. And I was all bummed because I couldn't find the AEV sticker in the driver's side door, but I didn't even think to look in the passenger side. So that was a great find, Dad. I'm glad that that's there. So let me show you something, what I'm talking about, like purposeful, right? So rock rails, right? Uh, and not all rock rails are built the same. Basically, you can have two kinds of rock rails. You can have rock rails that are installed in the body of the vehicle or attached to the frame of the vehicle, right? Yeah. The body is great for basically a vehicle that is tall and you need, you know, a step to get in and out of, but off-road, if you, I mean, the fr frame. No, but, you're, you're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you're in the okay. body, it's a great step, but if you're in the frame, it's actually a rock rail, which this is, right? So this is purposeful. It actually is useful so that if you hit a rock, it doesn't bend the body, but it's attached to the frame, so it keeps the body protected. There's one really annoying problem with it, though. What's that? Um, it is impossible to keep clean. So the wheels just throw a huge amount of salt and dirt and grime at the side of the vehicle. And I mean, we wash this thing like twice a week, and it always looks like this in the winter in Colorado. Do you like the tank color? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So I want to talk about this vehicle for a little bit. So this is a long-term Hyundai Santa Cruz, a Hyundai Lentus. And um, we've got, I think, 13,000 miles, 14,000 miles on it right now. So I uh, had it for nine months, 10 yeah, months About now. a year now, almost a year. And um, there's been a lot of really good and a couple of problems with this Santa Cruz that we've, we've come to learn about. Um, it, it drives really well, drives like a crossover, which is fantastic because it's based, of course, in the Tucson. It's got a really good interior. I love the neoprene-like seats. The technology is pretty good. It's very comfortable and it's great on road trips. The problems we've been having were actually the four-cylinder turbo made into the dual-clutch transmission. So when we first took delivery, it drove really, really well. Then it went in for a software update on the transmission, and it drove really, really, really badly. So it was really jerky really constantly struggling with the clutch engagement on that dual clutch and it felt like you couldn't back out of spot smoothly especially when it was cold and we were all disappointed as a team collectively but it just went back in for another transmission reflash and now it's and good it's, again it's back to normal yeah. yeah it's great so it was kind of high low and now we're back up to high but it's been a very useful little trucklet around um, the office here it's got the pretty good size bed back here uh, with the integrated tonneau cover good size for a, a vehicle of its stature of course and I think we're going to use it, hopefully today, if you want to help me, to, to bring my Volkswagen engine to the shop. 
Is that what you're going to use? Yeah, we're going to bring the Volkswagen engine? Yeah, we're going to use the Santa Cruz. Over at Classics, we just pulled Tommy's uh, 72 or 71? 71. Super yeah. Beetle engine, and we're going to have it rebuilt. Uh, so that's exciting. And this is a perfect vehicle for that because the engine only weighs 162 pounds. It's small, it's compact, perfect. That's all you need, right? Yeah, it's really, really great. Um, we got a lot of vehicles at the barn, a lot of broken vehicles. The Fiat broke again. The, the Classic Mini broke again. Um, the, the Porsche is in the shop, but it's... It's a whole thing. Yeah. Um, so we got a lot of kind of vehicles, the old stuff up at the barn, a lot of broken stuff. So we're going to try to get some of that fixed. And most importantly, if you guys want an electric vehicle that's been well taken care of, uh, that is uh, super great, fun. Super fun. It actually comes with both. Are, you, are we selling it with both sets of wheels? Oh, yeah, we are. So you've got these uh, cross climate uh, all seasons. All weathers. All weathers, yeah, which are great in the snow. And then you've got the, well, they look like a three pronged British plug. Yeah, I've got the stock wheels too with a high performance tire on it. Um, this car is up for auction right now over at tflbiz.com. We'll link it below. If you want to learn more about the poop truck, head on over to uh, <laughs> TFL Truck or All TFL and you'll find out what we're doing with that. Yeah, and a big thank you to Case behind the camera. Big thank you to you guys watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Ciao.